Welcome back. This is the first in a series of brief lectures on electrochemical impedance spectroscopy. I suppose this is the most powerful experimental electrochemical technique. So it's critical that you understand uh, how the major features of this methodology. We have already seen in a previous lecture why this circuit called the Randall circuit is relevant to model an electrode electrolyte interface. So this has certain critical circuit elements. So this R omega indicates resistance for ion transport at inside the electrolyte because for action to occur at the electrode, ions have to be transported from the bulk of the electrolyte across near surface regions to the surface of the electrode. So the ohmic re resistance for this ion transfer is indicated here. This is what makes, in a way, electrochemical behavior very unique, a capacitative element. So there is a double layer capacitance in this region that is indicated here. This is a measure of the resistance to charge transfer. So if the activation energy for charge transfer is very high, then this RF circuit element, which is a measure of resistance to Faraday current is very high. And this indicates working electrode, which is the working electrode. And we also discussed in that lecture, uh, lecture on Randall circuit, why um, other features of the counter electrode are not uh, relevant or can be neglected in a measurement involving three electrode setup. So overall, there are two routes to ion um, current. One is the Faraday current, which becomes important once the potential is beyond a certain critical potential. Okay, so this potential depends upon the thermodynamics of the relevance redox couple. Once it's beyond a particular potential, Faraday current is important. And the capacitive current depends upon the capacitance of this interface and how the voltage changes with time. This is very important. This term is very important. Um, where, whereas Faraday current can occur even with just a DC voltage, for capacitive current to kick in, we need a time variation in voltages. While these ohmic resistors can be characterized by a simple resistance, which you're uh, aware of uh, from early uh, days of schooling, the way to characterize the resistance of a capacitor is not via resistance. So we use this term called impedance, right? So again, this is something you must have been, you must have seen in your earlier classes uh, and especially in the first year general physics class. So the central quantity in the series of lectures is the impedance. So let us see how um, you will compute this impedance and measure it experimentally. That's going to be the theme of the following lectures, the series of lectures that follow this. So the typical experiment that is used for uh, measuring uh, impedance is uh, very similar to an experimental setup, which you've seen in the past, except that across the two electrodes, um, the working electrode is one of these electrodes um, and the counter electrode is the other electrode uh, in a two electrode setup. Uh, you have an AC voltage. The magnitude of this AC voltage is rather small. It can be just five millivolts and so on. And in response to this AC voltage, uh, we measured the current and then, Eventually, 
the modern electrochemical workstations, once you uh, make this measurement, it will give you a plot something like this. Okay, So on the x-axis, you have a resistance. On the y-axis, you will have imaginary part of impedance. So this measurement is done at a variety of uh, frequencies. This indicates omega equal to zero, which is like a DC uh, source. And then you keep increasing uh, omega. And with this, we can get an idea of what is this resistance that corresponds to uh, this part. And this part corresponds to the resistance for uh, Faraday uh, transfer, charge transfer, all right? So this is the, this kind of plot is the central quantity, which uh, is obtained from experiments, but much more effort needs to be made on interpreting this plot. The electrochemical impedance spectroscopy plots can be fairly complex, even though we have indicated resistors, ohmic resistors and capacitance, it can have more complex circuit elements like inductors and um, something called constant phase element, all these, and some another, another element called Warburg uh, impedance, which is to do with the uh, mass transfer. Um, all these things makes EAS quite complex. Uh, we won't be able to do address all these issues thoroughly but I would refer you to a good set of lectures by Professor Ramanathan from IIT Madras. He has uh, presented this in an NPTEL course. So that is a good source. That's a semester long uh, course, uh, which indicates the richness of electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, this entire topic. But we will just try to get a bird's eye view in this series of brief lectures. You are familiar with AC signals, okay? So every household um, uh, has AC signals. That's the power you get is via uh, AC signals. So the typical Indian household has 220 volts, which is indicative of ERMS, right? The, the root mean square um, voltage is 220, and this, I suppose, is uh, 50 hertz. So on here there is time plotted on the, along the x-axis and voltage is plotted along the y-axis. This gives you the time period. This voltage variation is uh, uh, 220 volts, 50 hertz. Uh, this, for example, in other Western countries, they have, I think this is 120 volts uh, RMS and uh, 60 hertz frequency. Okay, So the typical AC signal is indicated by uh, this functional form mathematically. So you are all familiar with this. Um, however, the AC, the magnitude of AC signals we'll be dealing with in EAS is very small compared to this variation. Uh, we'll be dealing with just five millivolts and so on. Um, even So it's a small perturbation to uh, your electrochemical system. And the reason why you have a small perturbation is you want the system to respond in a linear manner, okay? So for example, when you take this typical model system, which we have addressed many times in this lectures, you have a reduced species, oxidized species. So if you impose an AC signal, this is a small variation. Uh, it's a small signal perturbation. So in response to this, you would see a small variation in concentration. Supposing this, you have a system at equilibrium and on top of that, you impose an AC small signal. Um, in response to this variation, the system also shows a periodicity. The periodicity is at many levels. First, the concentration of R also varies in a periodic manner. Concentration of O varies in a periodic manner. And you get a current response, which is also in a periodic manner. Okay, So the functional form of 
this current response is shown here. So what is critical to observe is that this small signal variation of voltage has a frequency omega. All these variations also show a frequency omega. Okay, So it, there can be higher harmonics, but at least as a fundamental um, harmonic. Uh, but even though this variation has the frequency omega, there can be a phase difference between this signal and these signals. So the phase um, of these periodic signals is different from the phase of the electrical potential variation or electrochemical potential variation. Okay, So that is important to understand. We will elaborate these issues in subsequent lectures. This is just an introductory uh, lecture, a very brief introductory lecture on um, what is being measured and why you want to be measuring uh, these things. So in the next lecture, we will take a model electrochemical circuit, let's say Randall circuit, and compute the impedance of this circuit. Uh, that will give you a feel for uh, what goes into impedance uh, computation. But the circuit elements in uh, real life systems can get fairly complicated. Um, for all these things are dealt in Ramanathan's class, but at least uh, for some simple circuit, we will do this uh, compute the impedance exactly. Thank you.